I'm Paul. Thanks for checking out this PowerX video. In this video I am going to cover some tools that you can use to improve the authoring experience in PowerApps. Now I think it's fair to say that the PowerApps authoring experience has improved massively since PowerApps was first introduced. But it's also true to say that the experience was pretty terrible when it was first introduced. So now the experience has perhaps gone from absolutely tortuous to merely quite unpleasant. I spend, uh, probably I go into Power Apps most of my working days for some period of time. So it's really important to me to try to uh, make my life easier, improve my life by improving um, how I use Power Apps and my studio experience. And I do that by changing certain settings, but also by using a few external tools, which I'm going to share with you in this video. So the first tool um, that I think is well worth you taking a look at is Notepad++. I expect there are other free uh, text editors that you could use. This just happens to be the one that, that I use. You can download it for free and I find it very useful. So Notepad++ is just a text editor with some whistles and bells. Um, so the ability to have multiple tabs and the like. So if I'm editing formulas in Power Apps, uh, let's find something which is a reasonably long formula. Here we go. So I'm just going to copy that formula and pop it into Notepad. There we are. So what we can do is we can we can see much more easily um, all of our formula. We have nice things like the matching brackets. If you can see that are being um, matched, they're, they're, they're showing in, in red. Um, we can do things like zoom in a little bit and zoom out if we want to. Uh, you can also do some fancy things if I can get the key combination right where you can insert things onto multiple lines as well. So that was uh, Shift and Alt allows you to modify multiple lines of your text. Uh, another thing it will do is anything that you have already mentioned somewhere on the tab, um, it will repeat. So if I go box, we can see we've got box bottom, left, right and top because these are things that I am using in other parts of this tab. So Notepad++ doesn't have any knowledge of how Power Apps works. Um, it doesn't know what variables are in your application. It doesn't know um, uh, the parameters uh, that you need to put in for the, for the uh, different formulas. Um, but it does have a lot of nice features and I often find it much easier to copy paste an existing formula into Notepad++ for editing rather than to do it inside Power Apps itself, particularly if it's a complicated uh, formula or a long formula. Much easier to do in here. Of course, the other thing that you can do is you can just use this to store different versions of your formulas as well. So if I'm tweaking this formula, typically what I would do is copy paste the original version and then I can come in and I can make changes to another version and if that doesn't work out very well then obviously I can copy paste the original one back again. Power Apps does have undo, you can hit Control Z to reverse things but it doesn't always work uh, in my experience uh, and the times it doesn't work are usually when you've done a lot of edits to a very big formula uh, and then you can't go back. So yes, just Murphy's Law there. So that's Notepad++. I recommend you download that. Um, there's the URL. I'll pop that URL into the description for this video as well. While we're talking about uh, the formula bar and editing formulas, then something you might want to switch on uh, under the advanced settings is the, uh, I think they call it the advanced formula bar. Now that is under the experimental features at the moment. Oh, there we are, enhanced formula bar, sorry, not advanced, enhanced. Um, so you have to switch that on and then you have to save and close the app and reopen the app, so it's a little bit of a faff. Um, but it can be quite useful. Um, 
so you get some better IntelliSense so for example if I just take this line out for a moment uh, oh yes the other thing is you can actually hit the return key for a new line you don't have to mess around with shift and return for the new line if I start to type in the name of one of the fields in this collection then very nicely it actually gives me the IntelliSense gives me the ability to do the autocomplete uh, and that little symbol there with the little X is letting me know that that, that is a field and then if I start to set it to a value, it's going to suggest that I set it to a value uh, which is a variable. That's well, giving me other things as well, but uh, the thing I want to point out is the little symbol is letting me know here, well, this is a variable. So I can see, even though these have been given the same name, the field and the variable, um, I can see in my IntelliSense list exactly what I am selecting. So probably worth turning that on. Uh, the downsides to it are that it tends to be slow. So I've just got a very small sample app open at the moment. If I had a, a much larger, much more complex app open, then it can take time for that IntelliSense to appear and also for any um, error highlighting to appear. So if it's going very slowly for you because you've got a large app, then you're probably going to want to turn that off again. Um, oh yeah, another little nice feature of it is we can see where errors are on the scroll bar. So if I just make that a little bit smaller, if I see that I've got an error in this formula and I'm not sure where that error is and I'm scrolling around trying to find it, um, what I can do is look on the scroll bar here, see the little red blob and if I move the scroll pointer over that, then I can see exactly where that issue is. Uh, the other annoyance uh, for me with this is that the normal formula bar, you can drag the formula bar up and down, change the size uh, just by pointing the, the mouse pointer over the bottom edge and dragging. I have no idea why that has been removed in this enhanced formula bar, but you've only got three sizes available. You've got the completely collapsed, the little bit bigger, and then the fully expanded mode. And the only way to flick between them uh, is to use these buttons, which uh, just from a user interface perspective is pretty horrible, particularly if these buttons are a fair distance apart. So you've got to open it a bit and then come all the way over here to open it all the rest of the way. Small thing, um, but I do find it annoying. Okay, so that is the advanced formula bar. The next thing then I want to show is a tool called the Power Apps Review Tool. And this is really useful uh, if you are trying to find things within the formulas of your app, because amazingly, Power App still does not have a search facility for searching through the formulas. You can, of course, search for variables, which is great. You can see where particular variables are used, um, and then you can jump to that location within the app, which is, uh, which is quite nice. Um, so that works for variables, but if we're talking about collections, you can see what's in a collection, but you can't see where it's referenced. Uh, so that is quite awkward. So if I don't have some external tool, the only things I can do is to kind of go through every little property that might possibly reference that collection. So if I want to do a proper search on my app, uh, what I can do is I can use this Power Apps Review Tool. Um, you can download it. Uh, again, I'll put this in the description, this URL. So you can download it from GitHub. It is from Microsoft, but they do point out that it is unsupported. So um, hard luck if you have any problems. Um, but this is what the, the tool looks like. 
Now I've already uh, loaded an app into it. What you have to do is within your app is go file and save as and then say you want to save it to your computer. Uh, that will then download an MS app file and the MS app file is what you can open when you hit the open button on here. And then when you've done that, what you will get is this screen where we can see the names of the controls, we can see the properties of them, and we can see the actual settings that are within them. So I think the intention is, is this is used to compare a, a baseline value with a new value. I don't actually use it for that, I just use this for um, searching, trying to find the information that I want. Now, um, a couple of uh, warnings on this. Uh, the first one is that if you have a large app, this takes a very long time to load the MS app file and display the information, at least on the on the PCs that I'm using. So uh, yes, it's very much a case if you've got a larger app, you can start it opening the file and then go make a cup of tea or something because it's going to take many minutes in my experience with a larger app. Uh, and if you have loaded in a larger app, then sort of trying to jump between these different modes um, is really, really, really painfully slow. So the way I usually use this, because unfortunately most of the apps I'm working on are larger ones, the way I usually use this is once the app is finally loaded in, I hit the um, Savers HTML, which you can then open. So I've got one I did earlier to save time. So you just get it in your browser window and then you can do searches. So I was talking before about not being able to find the collections within the Power Apps Studio interface itself. But if I start looking for one of the collections I know exists, right, I can very quickly find where that's referenced. So it's referenced in four places. It's referenced in the text property of uh, label result value and get the next one here we are it's the uh, oh that's gal ocr word row num so that one doesn't quite match but we'll probably find somewhere else okay no so it's just in one place there we are the other ones are similar collections which have got a few additional characters after them if I were to put a comma in there, then I'll only get the, the one result. So that's really useful, uh, particularly if you're having to try to get your head around an app that somebody else has built and trying to figure out you know, what it does and what references what. And if you change a particular collection or you change a particular thing, what is the impact going to be? What are the uh, sort of descendant uh, items that might be affected by that? OK. So that's the Power Apps review tool. Recommend you take a look at that. And finally, uh, the other tool, this is actually built into Power Apps itself again, is under the advanced tools here over on the left, you've got something called Monitor. So when you click open Monitor, it will give you a new tab, which is initially empty, but as you start performing tasks in your app that result in network calls and data being pulled uh, from your data source, then it will start to fill up with that information. There we go. So let's just get it back to its normal, normal look. So you can see the time that a particular network call happened, what category it falls into, uh, what the operation was, whether it was successful, um, and usefully the duration, how long did it take for that to happen, and how big was the response, how much data was sent back as a result of that request. Now I've got a couple of videos on performance where I go through this in more detail, um, but where this really is useful is trying to figure out what's going on 
in your app, particularly where your app is running slowly. So if you've got that situation where you can see the activity indicator, those little running ants, as they call them, going across the top of the screen, and you're thinking, well, what is it that's causing that? Uh, what, what instruction is, is resulting in that poor performance and that slowness? Then monitor is the way to, to get to the bottom of that. So if I find one of the larger responses, so I can sort by the, the response. So we can see here that um, this particular action, uh, the get rows has resulted in a um, very large amount of data being sent back, uh, some very slow response times. Uh, we can see the data source that it came from. Uh, and then if we want more information, just select the line, <coughs> excuse me, go into properties. And in here we can actually see the formula and even the part of the formula that resulted in that network request that took all of that time. So unsurprisingly, it's a refresh. Um, refresh is terrible for performance. I'll do a video soon on some alternatives you can use to refresh. Um, the big issue with refresh is that every time you run that command, then Power Apps will pull down the uh, records up to the delegable limit. So if your delegation limit is 500 in your advanced settings, it's going to pull in the first 500 records, whether or not they are of any use. So all of your formulas may be delegable, um, but when you issue a refresh to get those formulas to refresh and show the latest information, you've also got this massive overhead of it bringing down all the data up to the delegable limit, which is just ugly. We can see that here in the um, the actual request that was sent. So the, the JSON request that was sent across the internet to go and get the data. So we can see here, it's decided to pick the top 500 rows because the delegation limit is 500. And in the response, you can actually see um, some of the information that was returned. So monitor really useful for figuring out where the slowness in your app is, what is what is causing your app to be slow. Um, and as I say, I've got videos on performance. So if you want to learn more about that, check those out. But just as I'm talking about the, the tools that you can use, this is a very useful one. So I wanted to cover it. Okay, so take a look at those. Um, those are the tools that I use regularly. If you have alternatives that you use or you think are better, then please um, pop those into the comments and uh, let myself and uh, the viewers know. Um, otherwise, I shall just say happy power wrapping um, and I will be trying to produce videos on a more regular basis in the future. I've had a bit of a break from producing videos for a few months now, um, but as we start 2021, one of my resolutions is to get a few more videos out there. So uh, do hit subscribe if you want to be notified when I get those sorted and uploaded. Fantastic. Thanks for your time and um, yeah, happy power wrapping in 2021. Stay safe. Take care of yourself and those around you. Bye for now.